Thanks for that wonderful explanation. And now, it also ended up sort of shifting the course of your life, right? Yeah. I was, you know, I, I was a little bit of a different architect to begin with because I was working exclusively on healing. And my mm -hmm. background is I have a degree, my master's degree in architecture is in healing environments. Mm -hmm. So I was practicing that. And as I moved along, the more I started working with the mathematical proportion and what was going on with that, I started feeling personally out of balance. And mm -hmm. I actually went into and put myself through the integrative medicine program. Mm -hmm. And I kept finding that I, the more of these alternative therapies I was doing, I was getting further in touch with who I was. Mm -hmm. And so in the span of about six years, um, I decided to, you know, stop my practice. Which is um, big. Yeah, that was, it was a big <laughs> deal. To sunset my practice, I wanted to come back and get a doctorate. I didn't know exactly where. I had some childhood trauma mm -hmm. um, that I had experienced, and basically I'm a survivor of child abuse. Mm -hmm. And so I, I went through that and went through a series of therapy mm -hmm. in, bo using both traditional psychological practices as well as some alternative practices for me. And then at 40, 45 and 46, the same thing came out as I figured out I was a lesbian, so I'm a late life discovery. <laughs> I'm, I'm, one, I'm a, what do they call it here, uh, late bloomer. Yeah. So I was a really late bloomer. <laughs> so, uh, but all of that, it kept feeling like I was trying to get to this authentic self. Right. And so a lot of these things that we grew up with were in this kind of balance that just didn't fit me. So I talk about that this has given me a reason to think of things in an alternative way and know that that's okay for me, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And it's a new journey to move down a new way, and I don't know where it will take me. And rather than think of, thinking of things as having to keep this rigid box around you mm -hmm. or respond to society, I'm really looking at that you're ebbing and flowing inside mm -hmm. of this mathematical proportion. And you just have to keep balancing yourself and getting yourself sort of calibrated with that. And it's okay that you're going to oscillate. Because those are big changes, and they've occurred very quickly in six years. But as soon as I like got on the path, mm -hmm. it was like immediate. It, I couldn't even control it to go back if I wanted to, if that makes sense. Right. So it's like gaining new knowledge so that you can never go back to not knowing that. Correct. And also, but because of the, the pattern and knowing what you knew, you knew how to um, keep reaching for your more authentic self. Correct. Correct. And, and so was there also um, actual physical healing within your body as well, or was that not a Well, it was both. I looked, um, I had physical changes, and I was much heavier. I, I had a lot, of, a lot of stress issues, mm -hmm. and so I was probably, I'm still working on my weight. It's one of my, uh, food has been a little bit of my last coping mechanism, bastions, you know, you mm -hmm. collect these. So I'm about 50 pounds lighter than I was, mm -hmm. um, but I'm working, I'm still trying to, you know, balance that down a little bit. But I've been able to keep things more stable, so mm -hmm. that's like a goal that you have. Right. My blood pressure has always been pretty good, but it's much more stable. Cholesterol went down, all those things that were in, like, danger zones. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of always been in a little bit of a pre-diabetic condition. Sure. Are much more under control. And nice. so um, that's just been a good physical thing. Mentally, I'm just clear-minded, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and I trust my intuition more mm -hmm. as a result of it. So I don't feel that, I think sometimes we get ourselves in a very, um, you're actually, I, I think we're making decisions under tremendous anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to do things we really don't want to do. <laughs> and I'm much more, um, Honoring, of honoring myself, mm -hmm. and some people might call it selfish, but I think you're you're making you're doing the oxygen mask thing. I'm putting oxygen on myself right. before I can possibly help or teach or work with anybody else. Right. And I think we need to do that not just in a parent-child relationship, mm -hmm. but in almost everything we do. So I feel much more like I've taken in a lot more oxygen, and I'm not in this exhaustive state to be making decisions anymore. Mm -hmm. So mentally, I feel better about that trust in the universe. The universe will provide. Yes. It will always provide. And it will provide in these math proportions. I just have to wait for it. Because mm -hmm. every time I try to outplan it, outsmart it, 
something gets you know tangled yes. up in a big ball, and then I, I can't do anything about it anyway. So I create more more problems for myself. So I find that waiting and waiting for my authentic self and the universe to arrive together mm -hmm. just allows me to just make this better decision, and I'm under less overall anxiety and stress about that. This is in music also, so mm -hmm. the scales of it's. A lot of classical music is based on the, the three, five, and eight scales, and so um, things that Bach and Beethoven and a lot of their music that's classical that's based on the mm -hmm. piano keys, but violin keys are also there. So this appears in music and can be part of a meditative experience for you okay. um, in resonating that way. I think it's physical, I think it's spiritual, and I think it's biological. The music I want to listen to and everything I want around me, I'd like to be in this resonating. Yes. And so think of it like tuning forks. Mm -hmm. So if my human body is resonating and it's biologically operating at this frequency, mm -hmm. right? And plants are operating at this frequency, right? They're growing. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I like to be in nature all the time. Right. Because these two objects are mm -hmm. resonating. So if we hit the two tuning forks, they should align, right? Right. And so um, part of my study that I mentioned I'm looking at is there's been an awful lot of current research on uh, exposure to nature. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why does the human body want to be out in nature? They're doing studies about children and those that have ADD-type functions do better if they have more exercise outside mm -hmm. in specific nature, not just mm -hmm. outside, but in the forest or around mm -hmm. greenery. So is the body attuning itself sure. with this nature? Is it the air we breathe out there? Mm -hmm. Is it the chemical composition? Is it the seeing the plants? Right. So our human senses, I think, are attuned. So if our sight and vision is attuned to this, mm -hmm. maybe our hearing is attuned to this since the shape of the organ right. is attuned to it. I don't know if our taste is. Maybe the breeze is. But all those things, I think, are yet to come in what the mm -hmm. research could hold communicated that society starts to make decision making when we get to that 60 you can also look at this as a ratio mm -hmm. so 1.618 is 62 percent versus 38 percent so when does society accept something so we can also look at it as portions of a pie so if I was going to make a decision about something in my life I'm tending to use these cutoff points of 32 yeah. percent and or 38 percent and 62 percent for 100 percent it's not 50-50 and it's not yeah. two-thirds. Yeah, but it's it also, actually this. it, it kind of speaks to when will change happen right. when 62% of the population is in agreement. Is in agreement. <laughs> it is in <laughs> consciousness. That's, that, that's big. And then when you get to that vote of the two-thirds, right? Right. The society has already gotten there. By the time the vote is achieved, yeah. really society had to have already have gotten there or we would that vote wouldn't be taken, right? Right. So... Um, it's also looked at as a potential because the stock market supposedly rises and falls in this. And it, there are videos, there are some YouTube videos that, uh, that have an excellent explanation is growth does not happen in a straight line up. It happens, it recedes, and then it goes up again and it recedes. Sure. It's growth over time, and I'm sorry I don't know the years offhand, but over decades is in this ratio. And economists have looked at that. So if you think about the stock market, isn't the stock market just an agreement of human consciousness of what value is of something? Yes. Yes. So that's where they started looking at it in terms of decision making. So it's actually used in, it's used in economics. The more it's helped myself in trying to be this authentic person, mm -hmm. I'm just finding that biologically it has just a much bigger impact. Right. Because it's everywhere. It and is the, everywhere. The question that... Um, astronomers and these different people ask uh, themselves and people look at it is if it's appearing in all these natural things, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. It's obviously some universal proportioning system. So sometimes right. that's the way you'll hear it. And it's like, this is God's math formula. So right. if, if there is a higher power that made the earth and did yes. that, when it said make plants and make people and whatever, they all came out the same. The math formula was the same. Right. And because our bone structure is in this, when you make a cup or you want to hold something in your hand, don't I want to hold something that's proportional <laughs> to how my hand functions, right? Yes. I don't want to hold yes. something that's awkward. Right. So that's why industrial designers use this math proportion to design chairs that we sit in, the objects that we hold, the computers that we use, because it's ergonomically 
beneficial to us.